So we've previewed the base game, we've previewed Civilization 6 Rise and Fall, so the only thing really left to do before release is to preview the Gathering Storm expansion, and if you think Rise and Fall brought a lot to the party then wow. Yeah, this, this arguably brings even more. Today we're going to look at what content Gathering Storm brings, like Civilizations and Wonders, stuff like that, but we're also going to take a big focus, as to be expected, on things like the new mechanics, including the return of the World Congress. If you want to see more Civilization 6 content, please do feel free to hit the like button and, on this video and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, let's jump into the first point. So once again, let's look at the content the expansion brings first in regards to civilizations and wonders and stuff like that. So, the civilizations and new leaders coming with Gathering Storm include Corvinus of Hungary, Coupe of the Maori, Wilfred Laurier of Canada, Pachacuti of the Inca, Mansa Musa of Mali, who I particularly love because that safe has lots and lots of money, Christina of Sweden, Sullivan of the Ottomans, Dido of Phoenicia, and my particular favourite, Eleanor of Aquitaine, because she leads two nations. She leads both England and France, so that is a fascinating concept and one which I can't wait to jump in with. Just like Rise and Fall, Gathering Storm offers so much more content-wise. There are new units like the Civilian Rock Band and Giant Death Robot, which sounds absolutely terrifying, as well as new wonders like the Golden Great Bridge and the Panama Canal. I'll leave a full link to all the new units and wonders down in the description, so if you follow them, you'll be able to find out exactly what is brought. The new content stuff doesn't stop with diverse and interesting civilizations, wonders and units though, because there is a brand new era which comes in Gathering Storm. So this new 21st century era has been added to both the technologies and civics trees, and it gives lots of possibilities. For example, some of the technologies will allow you to combat environmental effects with new possibilities, such as relocating your population out to seasteads. And you can also build giant death robots, which, yeah, that's also interesting and useful. Now, what I really like about this new era is that it's, it's mixed up every time. The technologies and civics trees for this brand new era will not look the same in every game, because research times will be different, I think the order for things are different, so the fact that in real life, we don't know what the future holds, we don't know how long it's going to take us to research and perfect, and perfect certain things is reflected in the game. I think this is an absolutely fantastic feature, especially since they have randomised the two trees for each individual game. Moving away from something very scary like the unknown future and the possibility of being ruled by giant death robots to something we're much happier to see the return of, the World Congress is coming back to Civilization VI in Gathering Storm, and this is a feature I'm sure many console players will be happy to have access to. So obviously we've had the World Congress before in Civilization. Now let's talk a little bit about its features and how it works. So to be effective in the World Congress, you're going to need plenty of its currency, which is favour. Favour can be attained through diplomatic means, including things like creating alliances and competing in the World Games or participating in peace agreements. All of them sort of things will gain you favour, which you can use to influence the World Congress. So why do you want all this diplomatic favour and why would you want to be successful in the World Congress? Well, basically, because game influential resolutions, so game influential decisions, are made in that congress. For example, in the congress you can vote on all kinds of things which affect every aspect of the game. One example could be, you can vote on things such as doubling the cost of buying units with faith, which is obviously going to harm civilizations which have lots of faith and like buying units with faith while play into the hands of their enemies. So it's really key to be on it and be thinking what works for you and what doesn't work for your enemies. The other thing that you're going to need to work on in the World Congress and a feature we talked about in Rise and Fall is that emergencies now work through the World Congress. So if you want to impact the direction of your game and your enemy's games, you're going to need to have lots of favour and influence in this part of the game. Being effective in the World Congress is a great way to either advance your cause or damage your opponents. Not to mention it also opens the door for the return of a brand new victory type to Civilization VI, the Diplomatic Victory. So give the World Congress the time and attention it deserves and it will definitely pay off for you. 
So we've already talked about some of the big changes which come to Gathering Storm, but in the remainder of this video, we're going to talk about the reasons it's called Gathering Storm and how what we do in the game can affect the environment and what sort of disasters that can lead to. So the first thing we're going to touch on in regards to this is the resources and how resources are used in a different way. Gathering Storm brings a completely new dynamic to the way strategic resources are used. The first major change is that strategic resources like coal, for example, are used as fuel to power your cities, especially from the industrial era onwards, which is a pretty big change considering that previously the most that your city did take from a resource like coal or something like that was that it essentially gave it extra hammers, also known as production. But in Gathering Storm, if you want your city to run to its maximum potential and make use of all those yields, you need to fuel it adequately. Now resources have changed in another way for units as well. No longer do you need just certain resources to just recruit a specific unit. For example, you've always need, uh, needed tanks, uh, needed oil to build tanks and iron to construct swordsmen, but you also need a regular supply of such a resource to maintain these units correctly or they will face a penalty when fighting. I think that's a really interesting dynamic because you've got to make sure you protect your resources. There is such a big focus now on resources, even more so than before. And we've seen that in real world conflicts where the resources, the strate strategic resources are really what countries fight over uh, and what have been so influential in, in campaigns in real life. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about resource management and things like that later on, but just for now, let's remember that managing strategic resources is really, really important on a number of levels in Gathering Storm, way more so than it was in the base game. One of the interesting and most creative parts of this expansion is the inclusion of natural disasters. Each terrain presents its own possible challenges and depending on where you settle depends on what natural disasters you're at risk from. There are volcanoes in the game which can obviously go off, desert sandstorms if you're near desert tiles, ocean hurricanes if you've got lots of cities on the sea, and blizzards and tornadoes, plus probably most importantly river and coastal flooding. I have watched a few playthroughs of this expansion and rivers do flood regularly. Um, so although natural disasters will obviously cause severe harm to your civilization and its districts, there can however be yield boost to some titles one, tiles once they've passed. So if you're near a volcano, a lot of the land can be very, very nice afterwards. And also if a river floods, it can often bring a lot of nutrition to the land, giving you better yields and things like that. So although largely natural disasters are bad for your civilization, there are things which can be salvaged and gained from them happening. The final big change that Gathering Storm brings that I want to talk about today is that of climate change. And we're going to talk about the strategic resources again. So as civilizations work their way through the world's resources, such as the coal we were talking about earlier, the world begins to experience serious climate change and severe climate change can have big natural consequences, which is quite like real life to be fair. Things like floods will become more severe and a feature that I really like is that as the sea levels rise because of climate change, the sea can begin to claim your land tiles. So maybe you've got a really nice, I don't know, coal tile or something. The sea could just claim it and that tile will be gone for good. But however, there is a few ways to manage this. So the first one is to try and make sure that you are managing the use of strategic resources around the world so we're not having severe climate change in the game. And also as the game progresses and technology advances, players really can invest in new greener forms of energy, well they'll need to, and build bigger and better defenses from the element, just so the sea doesn't go stealing your land, which would be quite annoying. So there you have it, the major changes coming in Civilization 6 Gathering Storm. If there's anything really big you feel I missed out, I mean I probably missed out a few little details here and there, but if there's anything really big you feel I missed out, let me know down in the comments and I will reply and give it a big heart and you know, it'll be good for people to read it. If you want to see more content on Civilization 6 on consoles, I already own the game on Switch and will be buying the expansions on Switch. I'm also probably going to buy the whole thing on the Xbox one as well. So if you want to see more content both pre and post release, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. 
Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel over the last months, years, however long you've been here, and I will see you in another video soon.